Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In my last video, I showed this image and I actually said that this was a composite image. I think, in fact, in the video, I said I was planning to make it a composite image uh, of two exposures, one taken a fair way before sunset when there was still some nice light uh, on the bridge and on the foreground and one taken much closer to sunset when there was much nicer light on the mountains in the background. What I thought I'd do in this video is show you exactly how I did that compositing process in Lightroom and Photoshop. And I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do, and you're not already a subscriber, then please consider hitting subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so this is the final image, and yeah, it's kind of cheating in a way because there is no way that you could ever get this image in a single exposure because there is no way at any time of year that you would get light on the bridge in the foreground in, in this way and also have that nice textured light on the mountains in the background. But it's all part of the creative process, and I thought I would show you exactly how I processed these images in Lightroom and then how I composited them in Photoshop. I'm not actually going to reprocess them in Lightroom, but I'll just show you the changes that I made. So, let's uh, get onto the computer and have a look. So I had two images. This first one was shot with the 10 stop ND filter. It's 30 seconds. Uh, it's got a nice, smooth, reflective surface, shiny surface on the water, some nice light on the bridge. The other image was shot uh, much closer to sunset and that's got almost no light on the foreground at all. The foreground looks really dull and boring, but we've got really nice light sitting on uh, El Castellet's ridge here and, and the ridge going back and a little bit of the Aitana Mountains here. Although the sky is a bit flat and boring in this one. Now, both of these images have already been processed in Lightroom and I'll show you what I did. So taking this image first, and in this image, all I was really interested in was what it looked like from the top level of the bridge down. Uh, I've applied my lens corrections as normal. In the basics, I've corrected the color cast caused by my 10 stop ND filter. I have a, a preset set up to do that. I have brought the exposure down by nearly one and a third stops, boosted the contrast, put the highlights all the way back because there were some quite bright spots in there, uh, boosted the shadows, uh, I've lifted the whites and pulled back on the blacks and that's adding a bit more contrast into the scene and kind of uh, balancing things out from putting the highlights back and the shadows up. I've also added some vibrance, quite a bit, and even a bit of saturation. The only other thing I've done on this one is in the split toning, I've just added a bit of warmth into the highlights just to make them a bit more orangey. And as I said, I'm only really looking here at the bottom of the frame, although I will say that the blue sky looks quite nice in this one. Now looking at the later image, this was shot with no filters. Uh, it's only a one tenth of a second exposure. We've got really nice light, as I said, on, uh, on the mountains on El Castellet's Ridge, but the, the whole of the foreground is boring. Um, and actually the sky hasn't come out all that well. It looks a bit washed out. Again, this has been processed, uh, but really all I've been looking at here is above the top of the bridge. So again, lens corrections in the basics, uh, pulled the exposure back a bit, no color correction on this one because it didn't have any filters in. So I pulled the exposure back, boosted the contrast, highlights down, left the shadows where they were, uh, boosted the whites, pulled back on the blacks. I did add a little bit of dehaze just to pull a little bit more detail out in that background. Uh, and a bit of vibrance, fair bit of vibrance again to make it pop. And once again, in the split toning, just a little bit of warmth added to the highlights. 
Now what I actually wanted to do on this, as I was doing this, is I kept popping it into the compare view like this, so that what I could do is I could check how I felt the two images would work together. So I was looking for you know, quite a nice balance between the mountains and the foreground. Uh, and I think I've got it here, although as I said, I don't like the sky on this image. So my original thought was that everything below the bridge was going to be from this image and everything above was going to be from this image. But practically speaking, what we ended up with was everything below the bridge from this image, the mountains from this image, but then I brought some of the sky back in from this image. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. So having finished the basic processing in Lightroom, I selected both images, edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, let's take the crop tool off so we can see the whole lot. And now we can see both images as layers in Photoshop. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the, the bottom image up to the top, just drag it up, just so that it puts my mountain image at the top and my long exposure underneath it, it hidden. I'm going to select both of them and auto align the layers that will compensate for any fractional movements in the camera when I was taking the shots. And yeah, we can see there's obviously been a little tiny bit of movement because I've got a little bit of gaps forming at the sides there, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take my top layer here and I'm gonna put a black layer mask on. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key option on a PC Click that, that's now hidden that entire layer. I'm going to take a brush, white, 100% opacity, a flow at 100%. Um, this is a soft brush. I make it bigger, and I'm going to brush in the entire top of the scene from that image and that has now brought that through quite nicely. Everything is through there. But what we've also done is of course introduced that slightly washed out sky, which I don't really like, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm now going to crop this 16 by nine before I do anything else. And the reason for that is I want to be able to see what my sky looks like in the finished image rather than applying it now and then having to change it later. So let's put my 16 by nine crop in. Uh, probably, I can't remember exactly how it sat on the original, but something roughly like that. I need to pull that edge in a little bit, take out some of the blank spots. there a little bit as well. That's applied my crop. Now what I'm going to do is take my bottom image and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to drag that up over the top so it covers the whole lot up. And of course what I've done there is effectively hidden everything that I've just done apart from the crop. I'm then going to put another black layer mask on, so hold down the Alt key. And then I'm gonna take the uh, sort of the gradient tool here. Okay, make sure it's white. Put it on top of the frame. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, which will mean that the, uh, the gradient is applied straight rather than going sort of off at an angle. I'm just going to drag down probably to about there. Maybe a little bit more. I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to put it in, maybe just bring it down a little bit further. Drag it down maybe to about there. Yeah. So that's given me, you know, quite a nice blue sky there. Now, I'm not completely happy with that sky, so I'm going to try it again. And this time I'm going to bring it down a bit further. Maybe to about there. 
yeah, that looks better. So I'm going to select all of the layers. I'm going to hold down uh, Alt Command E, which will create a merged version of that so I can have a proper look at it. And immediately I notice this little tiny bit of light over in the corner here. I'm just finding that a bit distracting. So I'm going to just pull my crop in a fraction tighter. About there, I think. I think it probably needs maybe a little bit more contrast just to make it pop a little bit more. So curves layer and I'm just going to put in a little S curve there like that. Yep. And I can then create another merged layer or command E. And that's pretty much the final image. After I'd posted this in the video and uh, then came back to look at it, I did feel that this section just here, which is a section of concrete showing through where the sort of the, the soil and the plants had been washed off probably in the rains, was a bit distracting. So I did spend a bit of time with the clone stamp tool, just filling that in and making it look uh, a little bit nicer and that brings us on to the finished image which is that one and that's it that's the final image and I hope you found that interesting this was a pretty simple uh, compositing process because I had that nice line of the bridge to act as a uh, as a divider for most of it but the same process applies for pretty much anything else. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please consider hitting the uh, thumbs up, give it a like, maybe sharing it on social media, leaving me a comment, love to hear from you. And uh, of course, don't forget about that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. And finally, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, so thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.